Let's welcome in the management at IOC at this point of time. Mr. B. Ashok, chairman at IOC, is now joining us. Uh, sir, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Could you just tell us about the Q4, what happened, what were the hits and misses in the quarter? Uh, of course, we have had an outstanding year in terms of physical performance, uh, which includes Q4 as well. Uh, I would just like to share with you some of the highlights. We have had uh, record throughputs in terms of refining uh, pipelines. We have had record sales as well uh, in terms of not only the petroleum products, but also in terms of our petrochemical sales. So uh, overall, in terms of operational excellence, operational performance, we have had an outstanding year. And uh, we have been doing that year after year for the last uh, at least three years. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the financial performance again, we have had an excellent year. Uh, our profits have been at record high levels. Uh, overall, if you look at our profit after tax, uh, we have declared a profit of, uh, uh, profit of 19,106 crore as against 11,242 crore during the uh, previous year, April, March uh, 16. So uh, a tremendous increase of about 70% over the last year's uh, profit. Uh, even during the quarter, we have done extremely well. Uh, typically, if you are looking at GRM figures, uh, we have had a GRM during the quarter of $8.95 a barrel as against $2.99 a barrel uh, during the corresponding period last year. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there has been an inventory gain uh, of uh, uh, close to uh, I mean, 12,000 crores. We have had an overall inventory gain of 12,477 crore during 16-17 against an inventory loss of 9,813 crores last year. No doubt this has uh, helped us in terms of improving our overall profitability. Uh, but I think uh, operationally we have done significantly better. So uh, even if you back out the inventory effect uh, in terms of our profits, I think we have done uh, much, much better in terms of an EBITDA margin going up by at least 7,000 crores because of only operational parameters. Can you talk about the Paradip refinery, the GRMs over there in Q4, especially when you reported more than 80% utilization? No, GRM from Paradip refinery, uh, I mean, I wouldn't uh, have the data readily at this point of time. Uh, suffice it to say, I mean, we have had a positive GRM, but it has been lower than our average GRM. So if you include the GRMs of uh, Paradip refinery for the, uh, for the year, it was certainly lower, uh, uh, it was affecting it in a, in a lower manner. Uh, but having said that, during the last quarter, Paradip refinery has operated to, uh, uh, on a fairly stable mode. Overall, during the year, we have processed uh, nearly 8.2 million tons of crude from Paradip refinery against a capacity of uh, 15 million tons. Uh, so since we have been uh, on a stable mode, I think the impact of Paradip refinery would be more substantive during the current year. 17-18, certainly Paradip refinery will be able to impact in a more positive manner uh, in terms of both GRM as well as our overall profitability. Sir, in April, the data that we are getting for Paradip, uh, there was about 58% that uh, you know one can see in terms of total usage. Can you just tell us why it went down after 80-90% in the last few quarters? Uh, no, I mean, uh, it, uh, April uh, performance in terms of Paradip refinery, I mean, there, there have been some, uh, uh, some of the units had to be shut down and so on for certain specific repairs, uh, etc. But if you look at the current throughputs, we are operating close to uh, uh, the full capacity. If, even on a daily basis, if you look now at the figures, Certainly, the refinery has been operating at close to 15 million tons. You would understand that this is a very complex refinery with multiple units. All the units need to be operating in a stable manner if the entire uh, refinery has to operate in a sustained manner. So normally, any refinery which gets commissioned of this nature, only in the third year of operation, it will be operating at around 90% capacity. I mean, uh, last year was the first real year where it was more of a first year type of an operation. It was dedicated to the nation in February 16. And we started operating the refinery and all the units had to be individually operated uh, for their performance and then uh, things had to be attended to. So we have been doing that and uh, now uh, we, are, we are quite close to all units having stabilized and uh, currently it is operating well. So on a month on month basis, I think uh, it would not be uh, I mean, uh, uh, it would not be uh, proper to compare on a month-on-month -month basis. Uh, but having said that, I think this year, certainly, we will be operating at very close to full capacity. 
in FI18, but Paradeep Refinery, what are the targets if you could just share with us or do you believe that it will stabilize and operate at uh, a very decent capacity utilization? Absolutely. During the 17-18, uh, we expect it to operate at near full capacity. Right. Can you also just tell us that, you know, this is a very complex refinery, as you said, and, you know, there is a lot of investment that has been done uh, into this refinery. Uh, so will this have GRMs when the output is full much better than others? No, certainly. I mean, we are expecting uh, a double-digit GRM from Paradeep Refinery if it operates in full capacity. Right. Uh, can you also just tell us that uh, in terms of GST, what will happen to the oil space? So I believe that, of course, oil is out of GST, but there are certain irrecoverable taxes or irrecoverable input items uh, that, uh, you know, one, one still needs clarity on. No, essentially, you know, the five of the key products of uh, the petroleum uh, is, is not part of the GST as per uh, what is designed currently. Uh, there are some issues, especially pertaining to, uh, you know, standard taxes and uh, uh, the, the uh, input tax credit, etc., which are uh, not recoverable and so on. Uh, but we are engaged with the government and uh, we are sure that uh, these concerns of ours have been formally notified to the government as well. And uh, while there are implications, uh, if you uh, look at the worst case scenario, I am sure that uh, once the GRM gets implemented, the government will also be quite, uh, 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 I mean, they will be in a position to address some of our concerns and take accordingly uh, steps for that. Have you made presentations to the government? Do you expect before implementation of GST clarity on this? No, I am not very certain about the timing of the clarification, etc. Certainly, we have made some of the presentations uh, as an industry we have body. We have uh, made our presentations. Uh, people in the concerned ministries are aware of the issues. Uh, and I'm sure that they will take cognizance of that when uh, it comes to implementation. Right. Can you just also tell us about the market share, especially for diesel versus the private players? I think there is a fall down in market share for the, for, from uh, public to PSU. See, when the industry opens up to competition and more players come in, naturally there will be some impact on the market share. But having said that, let me say that uh, for Indian oil, the, the last year, 16, 17, has been outstanding in that sense also because we, uh, relative to our other PSU companies, we have improved on our market share in retail, uh, both in uh, MS as well as in HSD. So, which is a good indicator that uh, we have been able to not only retain our customers, but we have been able to uh, improve upon our uh, customer, uh, uh, I mean, confidence and uh, garner more businesses as well. Uh, so, this is a, a very, very positive thing. So, even if you see that overall uh, the number of players in the industry, active players in the industry have grown, uh, relay, our relative position has not been hampered to the extent of our participation. We have rather improved on our position. Uh, in other words, I would say that what we could have potentially lost, we have not lost. So that is one. The second thing is overall, if you look at the private sector as a whole, I mean the, the, the market share that they have garnered, all the players put together, uh, if, is of the order of uh, between 4 and 6 percent uh, in MS and HSD. So which I would say is uh, uh, not very, very large. And uh, uh, our loss, if at all, in, in the industry, uh, when you take into account all the players also, is uh, not proportional to the, our current level of participation. Can you talk to us about the CAPEX requirement for next year? Uh, our CAPEX is uh, a little over 20,000 crores for next year. Uh, and uh, uh, during the current year also we had, uh, I mean 16-17 also, we have uh, in invested a little over 20,000 crores. Uh, but a significant portion of that has also been because of our equity acquisition in the Russian assets. Uh, where we have spent nearly 6,000 crores. So the, the next year, that is 17, 18, uh, a majority of our investments are uh, focused on uh, improving domestic infrastructure as well as our uh, capacities. I mean, a lot of projects are under implementation at the moment uh, in refineries, uh, in terms of quality upgradation projects, in terms of, uh, I mean, capacity upgradation projects. Uh, then when you talk of pipelines, currently around 6,000 kilometers of pipelines are in various stages of uh, working. We have expanded our pipeline network by close to 1,100 kilometers during the last year. Uh, 
which has also helped us in terms of our optimizing the logistics costs, especially Paradeep. From Paradeep, uh, we have gone up to Raipur as well as to Korba and Jarsuguda and all that. So some of those extensions are coming in. Other major pipeline projects, including LPG projects, are being in, uh, are being executed at the moment. So pipeline projects are also there. Marketing infrastructure again, we are expanding substantially, and uh, not to talk of retail. I mean, uh, adding petrol stations and so on. Uh, those are happening. Uh, marketing infrastructure in terms of terminals, uh, newer terminals are being constructed, and uh, uh, more investments are also being made in LPG uh, because the LPG uh, business is growing rapidly. We need to improve our bottling infrastructure. We need to also uh, set up our import uh, facilities. Two of our major projects are being implemented at the current point of time. One import terminal at Cochin for LPG imports as well as uh, one more import terminal at Paradeep. Uh, Paradeep refinery is also generating a lot of LPG and uh, once the pipeline connectivity is established during the current year, uh, we should be in a position to actually uh, ship a lot of product uh, through the pipelines rather than moving it by road. What was, uh, you know, the dividend of last year was one of the record high dividends and uh, it was quite fantastic according to a lot of uh, strategists. Uh, do you believe that similar amount of dividend can be sustained? Uh, we had an outstanding uh, year last year, as I said. So naturally, uh, the rewards to the stakeholders have also been uh, outstanding. Uh, we believe that if the conditions uh, uh, continue as it is, I mean, think we should be in a position to uh, operate on a stable basis. The, some of the positives, if I can say so, uh, in terms of uh, my optimism on this count is that, uh, number one, uh, I mean, with Paradeep Refinery coming in, certainly uh, additional volumes are going to come in into our system in terms of refining capacity. Pipelines, again, we are expanding a lot of uh, additional pipeline projects are going to be commissioned during the current year, which will ac actually improve our uh, transportation and uh, reduce our logistics costs and so on. Uh, similarly, marketing, I mean, sales volumes have been growing on a consistent basis. Uh, even last year, we have uh, grown by close to 2.5 million tons in terms of overall sales volumes. Uh, with the rapid economic uh, growth in the country and uh, continued optimism in terms of uh, 7 to 8 percent growth rates, I think uh, requirement for energy will uh, sustain. So that is again growing. Our uh, special initiatives like uh, taking the fuel to the farmers through our Kisan Seva Kendras, etc., is continuing to expand. That network is continuing to expand. Uh, and the, the great thing is almost 14.6% uh, to 15% of our volumes today are coming from the rural markets. I mean, which is a, definitely a growing market. And uh, we are very, very strongly present in those markets. So all these things actually build in a tremendous sense of optimism in me to sustain our performance. But having said that, so many of the factors beyond our control are also going to impact our businesses, uh, especially issues such as crude pricing and all that on which we have no control. But I have uh, reason to believe that the crude prices will be range bound uh, because of uh, the international uh, uh, you know, happenings. I mean, every time the, there is a spike in crude prices or it goes towards the mid-50 ranges and so on, we also hear of uh, you know, issues of the increased rig counts in the U.S. Uh, U.S. has also started exporting crude uh, and uh, it started reaching the Far Eastern nations, etc. So all these things are uh, potent well to the fact that the crude prices should be uh, uh, range bound. And if margins uh, uh, also are reasonably good in the current order, there is no reason why we should not perform uh, in a similar manner uh, during the next year as well. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time for us. Always good to get a perspective. That is IOC for you, down about 3.5%.